Welcome to the Maguire's Club Showcase 2020. Slightly different. There isn't a club showcase, sadly. There's not a show. As you'll be seeing on the Lancaster Classic Motor Show page that there's a virtual show. I'm Tom, my colleague Dale. Yep. We'll be bringing to you our best bits from Maguire's history with the show, history as a brand, something for you to sit at home and enjoy on a weekend we should have been at the NEC. So the reason we're doing this is because, as you all know, we can't go out there and enjoy car culture in person. Obviously with the challenges that 2020 brings, it brings us new ways to enjoy cars and interact with car enthusiasts like yourself. So we're using this opportunity to create a digital kind of look back um, at previous years of the Classic Car Show and the Classic Showcase at the NEC. So before we get going into kind of the details of the cars and the shows that are featured, um, over the years. I thought we might take a few moments just to talk about ourselves and our roles within the brand, Maguire's, and the show itself. So my name is Dale Masterman. I run the shows and events uh, for Maguire's. Um, obviously, it's been a bit tricky this year, but my main role at the NEC Classic Motor Show started out with just helping out. I was a part-time kind of member of the team. I used to come and help out with technical questions and talking to people and selling product. But over the years, that's evolved uh, for me going around the show detailing cars, getting them ready for the stage, doing presentations on the live discovery stage with Mike and the other guys that are featured, and also doing technical demos on the stand and help answering kind of myths and questions people have about Maguire's products and processes. My name's Tom Clark. I have been with Maguire's just over 13 years now, um, and for 12 of those, I've been responsible for putting the NEC Club Showcase together for us, for, for Maguire's, which is no mean fit really, that the team around uh, really lend a, a ton of support. We have 16 car owners uh, on, on our stand each year, which obviously typically come with friends and family. So it's making sure that the experience for the owners are, is utmost for us. It's, it's club culture and we want to replicate that on the stand. Everything from the, their hospitality for them, making sure that they're comfortable throughout the weekend, it's a long weekend. But also, as Dale mentioned, Mike, Mike comes and does our presentation, so the cars are, are judged on the Saturday. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it, it's quite intense for us, it's our, it really is our grand finale to the show season, we build up to it all year, and as Dale alluded to, it's pretty sad that uh, none of us have been able to enjoy a show season this year. But yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty odd today, no doubt, sitting at home watching watching stuff like this and not being at the NEC looking at the cars like we should be. Mm -hmm. Especially where each car that is on the stand has won an event mm. through the year. So each car is already a winner that's been out and, and done the show circuit and done concourse or show and shine. So not to have that this year is a, yeah. it's a real sad point. So it begins with the first show in March. Show season kicks off, particularly with a few shows such as Ultimate Dubs, or in this case, Volks World Show at Sandown Park. This is the first opportunity to see the newly built show cars that are gonna be showcased during the year. And this is where we pick, or we have presented to us, 
the winner of that show, which then moves on to being a feature car of the show. So it all kicks off in March. We start taking details of the owner from there and we start planning everything from there. We often get asked, it's an open event. If you've won a club event, you, you can enter to be in the club showcase. So it doesn't matter if the clubs, I think we've had the Ra Monster Raving Looney mini club before that had 30 members. But if you feel like your cars won something and, and worthy of being on the club showcase, you can contact us and hopefully mm -hmm. in 2021, we can get, uh, we, we can invite you to join us. Yeah, what probably goes unmissed as Dale mentioned, so in March, what some of the unseen work because every car is representing its its own club, every car has an information board that discusses the a brief snapshot history of the owner and the history with the car. Some of them have owned them from new and they're just well maintained. Some have been fully restored, so there's a lot of history, but and also then there's 50% information about the club. Time 16, there's quite a lot of work making sure uh, you know grammar and, and, and English is correct in it. So when does it start? I mean, for the car owners, I don't think it ever ends. You know, like I use Mark Stewart as a yeah. reference. He's been on the stand three times, I think, twice. Mm -hmm. Three, three times. times. Three. They're constantly preparing. Yeah. You know, Tom Morley with uh, the Austin Allegro and the Metros. Yeah. Uh, see on Instagram, life. it literally is a way of life. They're yeah. always preparing. For, for us, it's non-stop in the background for sure. Yeah, and yeah, obviously we mentioned the info boards that go in front of each car. With each owner comes a different story mm. and the length of that story can differ. And we're trying to get as much information as we can about the, the car, the club and the owner into one or two paragraphs. Yeah. And when we receive the information from the owners, you'll either receive a huge long story of this end-to-end -end restoration. Pages. Pages or somebody that's, you know, there's different car people out there. Somebody might have just bought the car yeah. and just purchased it and decided to show it. What? And, and, and the histories the, are different. On the flip side as well, like very nervous. So they've yeah. got, you know, they've worked their whole life to get a car on the, on a Maguire stand, and then all of a sudden they've been asking these questions, and you know, you get one word answers. We have prompting questions to try and paint a similar mm. story, and you'll get, you know, how long have you owned the car? Six years. <laughs> Whereas sometimes you'll have, well, I bought the car in 1945, and it, yeah. there's a whole paragraph. Um, and it's interesting seeing that. And the digital area we live in, I've had one owner that wrote letters. Yeah. So each time there was an amendment or a change, it had to be a letter procedure, no phone calls or anything yeah. like that. Classic so, cars. Classic car owner. So yeah, yeah absolutely. you do get yeah, wide variety. For me, it's build up day. Mm -hmm. I love build up day. I love setting up the cars, getting them parked up as the stand gets built and as the stands around it get built, parking the cars becomes way more chaotic and way more fun but the anticipation of seeing the car and the owner then seeing everything built around the show and then there's that moment the calm before the storm where the stand set up we're all ready and then i always do a lap mm. of the show i'll always go around look at the stands why there's no crowds there and i think that's because we're so busy other than me going to a destination to detail a car or go on stage don't really see anything yeah no, so setup day is my favorite my favorite part i think uh, it probably it, it, it's standing back when all the cars are on there. So I do like the anticipation, but I get slightly nervous because ultimately if something doesn't turn up, I've got to make a call and try yeah. and fill a gap. Um, so I think when all the cars, or at least if I've had the last phone call from the last owner and to say, I'm on my way, I'll be 20 minutes, yeah. I can start, because everything else we can deal with on the hoof. If a PDQ machine doesn't work or, I don't know, a light bulb breaks or something yeah. like that. If can all the cars are there, I feel, relax because everything else we can deal with yeah but most importantly and it and i think this is really important it's for the team to get together other than this year and you know there's there's the three of us here you can't see patch behind the camera but he's here we're, we're a small team that work 50 odd shows a year on a normal year we run pretty pretty lean in the summer months and we we work in pairs so typically we don't get to spend much time together doing experiences it's a it's the only time in the year where the whole team come together and and actually just enjoy some company and reflect on the year and i think the social side for me i enjoy you know mm. sitting down with the team having a beer having a bite to eat talking about the show i think i really enjoy that part because it's almost hopefully it's been a successful year for us and we've um we mm. we get to reflect on that so i, I enjoy that as well as the car culture side once the stand set up it's not really too much work is it yeah for us you know 
working the stand and speaking to car enthusiasts and speaking to each other and it's a very social event. Mm, yeah, absolutely. I inherited the de a, a floor plan of the design from Dominic, who I think inherited inherited it from Steve King and it, it's very simplistic actually the 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 cars are the stars and that is cliche and cringy but we're providing a, a backdrop for these 16 stunning cars we've looked at a multitude of different varieties to present the cars on um, and white gravel simply is the best for lighting these cars are, are Concorde winners um, so they deserve the best best platform white gravel reflects the light best there's no substitute for it now i had and i'm sure many people that watch this that know us will laugh because i had a beer in my bonnet about having grass and white picket fence white picket fencing because typically the cars come from a show field it's very rare that they're from an in indoor show and i wanted them to be in a natural environment when i was looking through the pictures they were all on grass I eventually got my own way and sad to say it didn't really work. The, the white picket fencing enclosed the cars too much and the grass and, just swallowed the yeah, light, didn't it? It literally did just swallow the light. So we evolved. You, you, the eagle eye will always spot the differences, but we, we've had the currently black towers with metal poles over the years. Now they've got a little pyramid at top on them, but over the years they've had gravel, mm. but then we learnt the hard way that they become a rubbish bin. So we're forever chasing rubbish off of them. So we turn them into pyramids. They were red, they're now black. Just tweaking what we do, because ultimately it just refreshes it. But the And again, you come back to the cars. What we do is just try to complement them as much as we can in, in our own special mm. way that we do really. Mm. I mean, despite us having a huge blimp with our logo on it, you know, we try to yeah. be second to yeah. the cars. Yeah, but absolutely. we like to make sure that people need to find us. It's yeah. not very hard for them to find out where we are. The blimp's a great addition. I love the blimp. Yeah, so we have lighting technicians on the stand and as the cars are being parked, uh, the guys are up on the rig and kind of pinpointing each car because each car has different shapes, different curves, different kind of accents. So using those lights to kind of really highlight the key parts of any car just lifts the experience for the owner completely and also makes for a better looking stand. Yeah, it's something that people don't really notice. When you want, next time we get to go to the NEC and we're at, at, at the show, actually just take a little look up. A lot of the lighting is ambient lighting from the hall and it's quite a yellow light. Um, and again, they're Concorde cars and we've got the white gravel. So every single car has its own spotlight on it. Um, and, and you know that, that that's a cost but it's right the, the car owners it's it's a life it's a lifestyle for them it's not oh this is a big show i'll prep the car you know they they win concord events not just that year but previous mm -hmm. years it's a life for them and if we then just rock up and use ambient lighting to to put them up put show off the cars it it doesn't do anyone justice everything's about the owners and the cars for us and the mm. experience that they have with us for the don't, weekend you don't realize how much light we bring to that hall until yeah, they're turned off absolutely and it looks completely dark yeah, uh, without them before we get into our top three i think it's worth noting and, and actually not worth noting, we, we have to mention we've made some great friends mm -hmm. you know it, it's it's worked for us but we made some great friends you know mark and caroline dale with mark one Tom Morley, Gary Plum, there are so, and, and the list goes on, and genuinely become lifelong friends. Yeah. The, I don't want to offend them before I end my top three, basically, but. Yeah, these, these aren't Maguire's top three. These are mine and Tom's top just three. Just cars that we'd like to as, go home in. Yeah, as car guys that like cars and appreciate cars, and yeah. you know, if someone forced us to make a choice on which three we'd have to take home, these are the ones. Oh, it's tough. Uh, number three for me is the Plymouth Indian Motorcycles panel van. This was an ex kind of ambulance paramedic car uh, for, from way back in the day, I think it was like 1950s, 60s, that had been converted to transfer Indian motorcycles and the livery on it was perfect. It was in a teal turquoise kind of colour with the Indian Motorcycles logo on the side and it was just class and I loved it. My third place goes to Gary Plum. Now Gary had three cars on our stand if I remember rightly, MX-5, Porsche and the, my third place is the Alfa Romeo Spider because I hadn't seen one in the flesh before and obviously it was a Concorde car so it was stunning but I just fell in love with it mm. such a pretty yeah. car such a pretty so much car. attention and presence yeah mm. absolutely number two for me goes to an old 1930s Ford pickup truck 
Again, hot rod American based, um, but super classy, not over the top, you know, nice hidden away engine, moody kind of like hook cap wheels, nice classy interior, black obviously is perfect for any kind of detailed car. And it just looks like a complete joy to drive around. And I know the owner uh, was completely proud of what he'd done to build it and enjoyed it every weekend and took it out everywhere. My second place is tough because I've had double the years at the show. Mm. I can't, I've just looked back at some pictures and there's like so many good cars. Yeah. Martin Sheeder had a Renault 5 GT Turbo, wide arch, maxi kit, big like kit on the front. Brown one? No, it oh. was a modified black one. Oh. Yellow, yellow, yellow glass. Yeah. Split it rim. just wasn't for the purest, but it totally was. Maxi Renault 5 Turbo, Martin Sheeder. I, I, I just. Period. I breaker. stopped. I, I mean, you two will laugh, so I, I probably don't do it anyway, but I stopped working on that Thursday. The second it turned up, and I literally just mm. watched it off the trailer and watched it go into the space. Yeah. Can't remember the year of that, but that I still love that car. I think the first year I ever did a NEC as just a part time work for the for Maguire's, there was a brown wide body yeah, yeah, yeah. Renault yeah. Turbo, and that thing just got the most attention yeah. um, out of any car. We've had a, a Renault Alpine race car mm -hmm. as well. That was, oh, yeah. do you know, we've had, a, we had one of um, one Ferrari. It was one of two, I'm sure it was 268, and it was a race car, race Le Mans, unfortunately didn't finish, but that was stunning as well, mm -hmm. just open screened race car. That was a, that was a really You had a Willis cool Coupe dragster as well at some point with a trumpet sticking out of yeah, the bonnet and Willis everything. Coupe. Yeah, Willis Coupe. Yeah. Yeah, had some pretty special, special cars. Anyway, back to the top three. Just for sheer surprise and element and quirkiness, it's the TR Italia. Now, if you don't know what a TR Italia is, you won't be alone. I didn't even know what one was until I saw it at the TR International Weekend, uh, which, personally, is a fantastic week. It's one of my favourite weekends to work. Sort of because I'm not in that world. I'm not exposed to TRs on a regular basis. So this treat to go and, you know, go to that show and, and speak to the owners over the weekend. And it's a super laid back show and they always have an incredible lineup of Concor. TR owners are obsessed with, uh, along with other classic car owners, but the Concor level in TR owners in that world is extremely high. And this, this TR Italia was a very coach built, very rare Italian model of the TR car. And I'd just never seen it before and it was in this stunning Bentley colour and lovely interior and it just looked class and just caught everyone by surprise and I've never seen one since and I like that to be the only one I've ever seen. And I know he's taken it to America for Pebble Beach. Yeah, he did go to Pebble Beach. Yeah, yeah. So he's yeah. taken it right over the pond so this car has just travelled way mm. further than most people ever will and it's just been able to have all these experiences and it's fantastic. I think if I could every year I could say that's the best car. I think of recent years, I, th I think just because it, I just loved the ethos of the owner, was a, a white Porsche 356. He, he recalled the story and he said to me, oh, I just drove back from, I'm sure it was Millimiglia, but basically he'd been on a, a road tour and he mm. happened to pop in to the Porsche owner's a Tipex National Day. Beautiful. And <laughs> it's that good, he won it. But he'd driven, I, I, I'm going to say it was a thousand miles. He'd done yeah. a lot of miles, decided to just pop in, won it, drove it, to the NEC later on in the year. Yeah. I just, it epitomizes it for me. I yeah. know you mentioned driving it, but some of these cars are Concours investments. You know, they, they, they trailer everywhere. I just really liked how pretty it was. It's simplistic, mm -hmm. it was OG. It was just, just very, very pretty. That's a good question. So uh, Neville and David are our judges for the weekend. We'll never have the same car twice. But we can have the same owner. So in Neville's case, Neville had three cars. I mentioned uh, Gary Plum earlier. Brian, Brian from Mercedes Owners Club. He's been on. Mark, three. Tom Morley. Mm -hmm. And Neville had three times on our stand and decided to retire from that, but become our judge. And I don't envy them because, you know, if you have two, let's use Neville's mm -hmm. background, two Mercedes 190s next to each other, you can pick the differences between two cars. How do you compare a Mercedes 190 that's a Concorde to a hot rod that's custom? So actually how they do it is build quality, originality, so the points given and deducted dependent on how it's suited and overall finish. I don't envy them. They spend 20 minutes, I think it is, per car. On their knees. On their knees, on the gravel, which every year they beg us to change. Sorry, Neville and David. 
it all comes down to you know the, the tiny little things um and that can be I, I i won't get into which year it was but i remember one year one car had been fully prepped but there was some dust on on the driver's seat where they'd got off of the gravel moved the car and missed it now that's really tough but the points were level between that and another car mm. and that was the only thing that let it down I bet they've got an, a, an enviable task of doing that. But then on the Sunday, the club showcase winner is announced and Mike Brewer comes to the stand. And everybody gets an official memento of being on the stand. And then the overall winner is announced. The following year, that winner then opens the show in the entrance hall. So actually, we've had a, a couple of minis. We've had... Minis are big contenders. Yeah. Uh, Morris Miners. Yeah. We've uh, had an Austin Healey, a few Ferraris, Jags. Yeah. There's never a clear kind yeah. of sector of classic car owner. It could be, one year it could be a Metro owner, next year it could be a Mini, it could be a Cadillac, yeah. a Jaguar, it could be anything. Yeah. And as much as there is competition, it's also a celebration. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what we're trying to show people is, look how good the UK classic car culture is and look what these people are still doing. It's not it's not dying, it's not going away, it's just getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And every year that sh the stand reflects that. Yeah, and a point you mentioned earlier on, I think Neville said to me once, we're now obviously 2020 is none and void, but as of last year, 2019, the scores have been that high mm. that the 2015 winner, the points, I can't remember who that was, but uh, so I don't want to offend them, but the points that have been placed at like fifth or sixth now. in, yeah, mm. now to points. Not that that car's not, but the level of detail and competition's yeah. got that high. It's a credit to all of the, the car clubs and members um, and if anything, 2020 should have brought us. He's plenty of time in the garage, yeah. hopefully, building cars and getting them spick and span for next year. And I think that reflects the UK car culture in general. People mm. are way more picky about their car care and way more picky about detailing the car. It's not just a case of just giving it a quick wipe over. Mm. These people come with boxes and bags full of product. Yeah. And, you know, we're, we're done setting up the stand and they're asking if they can still stay, you know. How long can we stay in detail to come? We were saying as long as the building's open, you guys can keep going. There's no, people don't just drop them off and leave. They're yeah. dedicated. And yeah. when you walk around the show, it's no different. Well, that guy. Mark's a good friend of the business um, and of us. You know, we've, we've worked certainly before Dale, but then Dale's mm -hmm. continued the work. But I remember back in the day, Wheeler Dealey used to do a three day turnaround on a car. So they'd build it and prep it on the stand. Mm -hmm. They'd do live Q and A's and we would go and help prep the cars on the stand, uh, on the stage. I've got a quick funny story, you know, I probably know what's coming. I remember myself and Dominic uh, working on this Mini Cooper that was on an angle and I was working on the back angle and Mike and Ed were sat on the front doing a live Q and A in front of a full house. And all I heard, I was on the front and Dom was on the back and all I heard was ding, ding. Oof. I was looking down the back of the car and the little mini bolt on bolt bumper had fallen off and Don was like, what the hell am I going to do with this? <laughs> like the, there must have probably been a thousand people on the stage. But so Mike's, Mike's a great guy. Uh, he obviously he comes and does our, our presentation for mm -hmm. us. And these days now, Mr. Marston and does, does your thing. Yeah. So I disappear from the stand um, as much as it looks like I'm just going off for a break. Um, yes. I'm there doing uh, Mike's cars and the stand, uh, the display cars that go up on stage. But I also do the live kind of Q and A's as well. I remember, you know, my very first time doing it. I wasn't told that I was going to do it, and I've only just joined the brand. And I was there on the side of stage with my little Britney Spears mic, and the guy hosting was like, you know, have you ever done this before? And I was obviously not. He says, don't worry, I'll, I'll be on stage and I'll help you along. Stood in the middle of the stage with an MX-5 that I had to detail live on stage as well as take Q&As. The curtains open and it's announced that, you know, I was going to be there, this guy from Maguire's, and he's off, the guy that was helping me was off on the side of the stage talking to his mate. And then all I could see was Tom in the crowd, just with his phone like this. <laughs> and it's just me and just my solitary words of, Hello, <laughs> was the first thing, but it worked out. And having people like Mike Brewer who do that stuff day in and day out, he really helped yeah. uh, make me feel way more at ease about being on stage and the way he talks and the way he's helped with that is, has been fantastic. Mike gets a ton of unjust grief. If you actually meet Mike, anybody will know that he's a great guy. And he helps, he's helped myself mm -hmm. and Dale and anybody that will have been with him. He's, a, he's such a good personality in the sense that 
he'll never leave you high and dry. You know, if he's, the question is always something that is uh, leading, you know, like, so what's your favorite car? Yeah. It, it's so easy to talk mm -hmm. about all our favorite cars. And I, I think, um, and yeah, you, you just spend, spend some time around Mike. He's, he's one of the good guys. To the sure. point, we were on the other end of it. We were driving up on stage with our builds yeah. that we've done for Maguire's, our Mercedes and the, the Renault. Yeah. And we had to be interviewed for once. And yeah. that was a fantastic experience. For yeah, sure. absolutely. We had to be part of them, not just the guys from Mike, but here's cars that we'd done showing at the show that were right near it. And, it's a shame that we don't get to do that this year. Mm. So Tom vs Dale is a YouTube series um, in conjunction with Fast Car Magazine that we run between the two of us for Maguire's and it basically it's two car guys being given the opportunity to build brand cars that reflect our personal kind of passions and personalities. for many years so I need to. At natural. <laughs> it, it is that good isn't it? You mm. know we're two guys that sell car wax. Previously we built the the first car that we built was the Maguire's police interceptor that was a joint vision. Mm -hmm. We then did the Econoline, which was nice and, I say nice and easy, it was a, a restoration. It was yeah. just too, it was too good to call it that. We then did the pickup, which is modified. And typically then when modifications come in, it's personal tastes. And we have very different tastes in, mm. in cars. Um, and our, James, the boss one day, I think we were having a discussion about, about interior. interior. Mm -hmm. And James said, oh, if you two carry on like this, you should probably do a car each and have a build off. We did. Oh, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> Here I come to save the day. Man, this is ticket talking mother for the biggest. That's a comma and a comma and a comma. Gotta get it, get it. Man, this is ticket talking mother for the biggest. That's a comma and a comma and a comma. Gotta get it. I'm a comma and a comma and a comma. Gotta get it, get it, get it, get it. Comma and a comma. Gotta get it, get it. Man, this is ticket talking mother for the biggest. That's a comma and a comma and a comma. Gotta get it. So, you know, it really, uh, long story short, we had to pinch ourselves. We yeah. got the opportunity to build two cars that we would want to build, paid for by Maguire's. Mm -hmm. And the Maguire's cars, we, we manage the budget, we manage the vision, yeah. we deliver an, an end product, but go head to head mm -hmm. for a YouTube series. And it worked pretty well last year, yeah. and our second series this year. Yeah, I always describe them as the world's coolest company cars. Yeah. They are reflecting the brand and the brand's values, but they haven't got huge logos on them. It, it's more about connecting with the kind of everyday car guys that we are and the well, car guys and girls that we talk to. We're car guys. Yeah. So they just show it's trying to bring that personal touch and yeah. feel and relatable to, to the brand. So if you see us, you can stop mm -hmm. and, um, and, and ask us a car care question probably rather than anything else. But yeah. And then this year we're doing it all over again. I myself had a Jaguar S-Type R, which is the supercharged V8 Jaguar. And Tom has a... Yeah, 1966 Volvo Amazon, which is a stunning car. I've set about chopping that up, so sorry to the purest Amazon owners out there. I know that there's a few dis, uh, <laughs> disheartened, um, avid followers, but um, yeah, I think they're two pretty good, uh, pretty good cars again this year. They're going to yeah. be. No. I don't think I don't think that's. Um, I agree, <laughs> um, uh, but no, for the right reasons. Mm. You know, we've we've alluded a lot in this interview that you don't just build a concord car you'd love it you, you know it's a life for people they find the right car of course they get built but it's blood sweat and tears and not only that it's financial you know the builds that we do with tom versus dale there's a set budget and they're a modest budget mm -hmm. concord cars i'm not going to say they're not cheap you can buy a relatively well priced car but the investment that you make in time and money, you know, new bolts, new... new oh, it's the know. originality of everything. Yeah, yeah. you know, and, and 
to do something that's unique costs because mm -hmm. not many people have done it. Um, and it and it wouldn't be a credit. We've not got the time no. or the budget to, to do something that mm. doesn't represent the Concord world well the enough. Attention span. You've not got the intention well, span. Yeah. You forgot that question a minute ago. So this year we would have been all singing and all dancing about our hybrid ceramic range. Now these are products that utilize SiO2 technology, but make it super convenient and super easy to use. protection of hybrid ceramic. Whoa. Now in three easy to use products. In original spray wax, now as a liquid wax, and a spray detailer. Meguiar's hybrid ceramic family with advanced SiO2 technology. Meguiar's ceramic made easy. It's not only what we'll have been talking about, what we'll have been hyping about from this year, but also it's this time of year. SEMA will have just been last week. So we'll be getting excited about 2021 products. I know that just around the corner is gonna be Christmas. We've got a new blue bucket, hybrid ceramic bucket that's out. So keep your eye out for that for Christmas goodies. We've got some really exciting products coming out in 2021 that complement the ceramic range. And also some change in packaging that's really exciting that will really lift the ultimate range mm. back into vision. Uh, so even though we hope to get some car shows for next year, let's see how it pans out. We're still excited. We've got some lovely new products arrived this year and coming next year. Okay, well, thank you for joining us. Um, yeah. Hopefully you've enjoyed uh, listening to us waffle on about some of our memories for the NEC Club Showcase. Uh, really do appreciate it. We're gutted that we're not at the NEC seeing you face to face, but thanks for joining us here. I hope you enjoy everything else that Clarion, who are the organisers, putting everything else on for car enthusiasts today whilst we can't be there. So yes, thank you very much for joining us and enjoy the rest of this digital event.